Now what that's telling us here is you got two words, you got foreknow and predestinate. Amen. It's very important for you to understand because when you get to foreknowledge, a lot of people really get the wrong understanding of that. Some people think that, well, well if he foreknew you, uh, he just decided that, we, that one person is going to be saved and one person didn't. Well, it's not going to be saved. That's incorrect. To understand foreknowledge and predestination, you have to have a healthy understanding of God's omniscience. Let me say it again. I said you have to, to understand foreknowledge and predestination. You've got to mix in that God knows everything. So what that means, woman of God, is that in this uh, concept of foreknowing, he knew what you were going to do beforehand in advance. So, and the predestination thing, you were predestined, but you were predestined because God knew what you were going to do beforehand. So for those people that were predestined to be saved, they're only predestined to be saved because God knew one day you were going to choose of your own free will, of your own free will, of your own free will to be saved. So that's a lot, Jason. So predestination really is all wrapped up in God's omniscience and his knowledge of what you're going to do before you do it. Make sense? It's all wrapped up in what you're going to do before you do it. And so God's omniscience plays a major part in understanding foreknowledge and predestination. Okay. So, whom he did foreknow. Pregenisco in the Greek. Uh, genisco means to know or knowledge. And the first part of it is pre, that's before. So foreknowledge is knowledge that that God had before of what was going to happen when it was going to happen. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. So, so whom he did predestinate, then he did foreknow. That, that we might be conforming to the image of this God. So the whole concept in this particular section of, of all this foreknowledge and stuff, the purpose was that we would be like Jesus. That we would be conformed to the image of his son. That we, he might be the firstborn among many brethren. The word firstborn is protoktos, and it means preeminent. It means first in line. So Jesus is first. Did y'all get that? I said Jesus is first. Isn't that wonderful? He's preeminent. For whom he did foreknow, then he did predestinate to become the firstborn of many brethren. For whom he did predestinate, then he also called. Whom he called, then he also justified. Whom he justified, then he also glorified. What shall we say then to these things of God before us? Who can be against us? That particular little, little section about the, uh, uh, that, that I just quoted from you, where they're talking about uh, those those particular sections there, all those words are what we call the aorist tense. I'll break these down later. And all those are what? Glorified, all those words. That's a one-time action in the past. Whom he did predestinate, then we also call. Whom he called, then we also justify. Whom he justified, then we also glorify. All that justify, call, all those are, are the aorist tense. That's a one-time action in the past. So that, so that means you've already been glorified. Ain't nobody praying. It just hasn't been manifested yet in the natural realm in us. So it was already done, the justification, which means to be de declared righteous. You were declared righteous a long time ago. You were called a long time ago. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise God. So you all, let's wrap it up. Let's stand for prayer. I think it's okay. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, we just take time to bless you. Father, you is wonderful. It is the day that you have made, and we are so rejoicing, and we are so glad it is, Lord. We thank you that we're in the land of the living. We thank you that we can come together in this, in this sanctuary, in this church, and fellowship.
fellowship together in our Sunday school class of the Lord. We don't take it for light and we don't take it for granted, Father. We thank you for a timely word that your teachers have for the students. And we thank you that life was received from those words, oh God. We thank you for the encouragement that you give us and the perseverance that we have when we get out of our classes, oh God. And we can come back next week and we can do it again. And we thank you that we will bring someone with us to Sunday school tomorrow. We thank you, we bless you, we praise you. Amen. You guys have a blessed week and see you. Bless you. Thank you. See you on Bless next you. week. So our, on time. Our we on next the next yeah. Friday. Yep. So okay. I'm going to stand. I'll be keeping my bounce and review the show. Okay. Okay. So I have a question. You want to give to me for a review? Or do you want to do the whole thing? So we do one week, mm -hmm. and I don't know if you can start it off. Okay, so you go first, and then I go to the next chapter. So we finish this whole thing, and then that will be that will be. After the mm -hmm. we'll do that together, and then the following week we'll do that session. Good. You want to do that? That's powerful. Powerful. That's it. Here you go. Thank you. Okay. Sounds good. Thank bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Sounds right. Good. I'll flow with that. All right. Sounds good to me.